Today we are still on the topic of Judah and Ephraim and how Ephraim is the firstborn and he is the one that rose in preeminence because of Joseph and because his name means fruitful. And it, this is all about the abundance of God's grace and his mercy and the what he has prepared for those who love him. I quote the scripture, it says, uh, eyes have not seen or ears heard or enter into the heart of men, what God has prepared for those who love him. And we may not comprehend this right now, but as we move towards God, when we move towards him in by faith <laughs> and we start to see God move in our life, we are going to understand the abundance of his grace and the abundance of his of his uh, inheritance. And I'm going to start off with Romans 11 because this uh, this is the passage that a lot of people um, uh, you know, believe that you know that all this in time, uh, understanding and and this revelation and how we can determine uh what the what bible prophecy is and what we can see on the on the horizon is all centered around the jewish people it's all centered around israel and and it's because of the of romans 8 but there's some things that we have to understand because we are looking at this uh carnally but there is there is something more that uh, that that the enemy is wanting than this carnal world or that land in the Middle East because that that land in the Middle East may be the apex center, it may be the the uh, place where it all began, but it's not going to end there because everything that was written in the uh, in in the Old Testament written uh, and promised to Abraham, what it it it, it was a there was a there was a uh, there was a mirror there was something that uh, that was such greater bigger and and it kind of just uh, mirrored that which God promised him here on the earth you do you understand it's not uh it, 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 it there's something that is hidden that we cannot see something spiritual that we can't understand because god was showing us types and shadows he was showing us pictures and he was showing us uh the metaphorically things that were going to transpire but not necessarily in the carnal realm because this is a supernatural book. This is a this book is spiritual. And those who read and interpret this scriptures must interpret it in a way of, of seeing things uh, outside of time and space. The you know, the the, uh, the we have to see, we have to read it in a spiritual manner and it and it and it and it, and it, trans, it transcends time. It transcends time. So, and this is why we're all going to be taken back in these last days because we, we, have, a, we have already put God in a box. We've already de determined exactly how he's going to, to fulfill prophecy and, and, what, and what that's going to look like. And we have, you know, we have said, you know, he's going to do this first and he's going to do this second. And then he's going to do this, you know, and it's all sequenced out how we perceive things are going to, to take place because people look at these things. They don't understand the concepts of scripture and they don't understand, understand the, the, uh, the hidden meaning and the deeper things that, that are there because Satan, he's spiritual. He's, he, he, you cannot see him. He is not carnal. He's not physical. He does not live in a physical body. He is, he is a, a celestial being. We look, we are in a celestial warfare and we, and we, and we are, uh, we're engaged in with principalities and powers of rulers of the unseen 
and we, and we and we may not see what is happening on the on the physical but we can uh but we can uh ha we can experience some of the effects of it sometimes people do can see things you know god does open up and and let us see what's going on in the supernatural but but from the most part we are uh we're engaged in a warfare that is trying that satan does not want mankind to come to uh to to understand or to acknowledge or to come to the realization of their inheritance because it is it's it's more than what we can imagine and that's why i uh th this is why i you know I, i'm i'm going to show you things that are in the old testament today but we're going to we're going to take it to a, a deeper understanding because this is all about this is all about our warfare and how the enemy is going to uh, how he's going to deceive many because everybody's looking at things on, on on the peripheral and they're not and they're not trying to obtain this inheritance they're not trying to push forward they're not they're not trying to conquer what needs to be conquered to inherit this these promises and, and and under the full and understand the fullness of it all they all we kind of we we all want to just passively live live in this world and just get by and hopefully we make it to heaven hopefully we escape the tribulation hopefully we make it in the rapture and our inheritance is when we get to heaven well there's there's more to to this than what 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 we have been taught and I really feel like if we don't get this understanding, we are going to be we're going to be short uh, we're we're going to be short of the of the goal. We're going to be short of the inheritance, and, and Satan is going to usurp everything from us because we ha have no understanding. And it says in Romans eleven, we're going to stop with six and twelve. It says. It says, and if by grace, then uh, then it is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more of grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, works is no more works. When then Israel had not obtained that which he seeth seeketh for, they never obtained the promised land that they seek that they fought for. But the election have obtained it. The election have it. How they obtained this? They obtained it in in the realm of the of the unseen. Because this is about the promised land of the spirit. This is not a, this is not, this, these were just shadow pictures to show us the, the warfare that we're up against. To conquer those things that are, that are, uh, that are warring against us to prevent us from, to, to achieving this, uh, this uh, position in God. There's a position that everybody must qualify and every person must uh, strive for we've got the even Paul said we strive like one beating in the air we're striving for a crown we're striving for this down here we're we're counting the cost we're uh we're denying ourselves we're picking up our cross we're doing the things that are necessary so that we can obtain in the spirit realm and um, we'll get more into that so they obtained the election and, and the rest were and the rest were blinded, according as it is written. God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, ears that they should not hear until this day. And David said, "Let their tables be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their uh, their backs away." I say then. Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more than the fullness? For I speak to you, uh, to Gentiles, in so much as I am the apostles of the Gentiles, Tiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are of my flesh that might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be a reconciling of the world, 
what shall the receiving of them but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root, the root uh, is Jesse, the kingdom of, of Israel. I mean, the kingdom of Yeshua as being king and the kingdom of Israel. So the, the riches or the fatness of, of the root is within, lies within the promises given to Abraham. The, it lies in the development of the kingdom of Israel. And, and they were the election of God. God uh, chose them, not because they were mighty or big in number, but because he, by election he chose them to show forth his, his, uh, his kingdom that supersedes all other kingdoms and that supers all, um, all of the host of heaven. And, and we get a glimpse of this. And, and so at the root of it, it be holy, which, you know, the line of kings and Israel and being the priest, uh, uh, you know, Joseph establishing the priesthood and this whole Melchizedek order is, is the establishment of, of authority, power, and rulership. So are the branches, and some of the branches be broken off, and thou be a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with the partakes of the root, were partakers of the, of the root, because well, like I mentioned last time, that G, uh, Jesus or Yeshua, that seed line of David that came from Jesse, Obadiah, Jesse down to David, actually grafted in, because Boaz, was uh, was a Jew from from Judea, and Ruth's husband was an Ephraimite, and because of the firstborn given to Naomi, grafted in Israel into that seed line, Judah's seed line. So there was a so both both uh, both Israel, both um, Israel or Ephraim and Judah was embedded or coin, uh, uh, conjoined in one seed line through the line of David. So this is the this is the olive tree, and the two become the was it the two become one, in my hands. The Bible says that take the stick of Joseph and the stick of Judah, and we'll bring them into one one in my hand. So this is through the Messiah. He is the restorer of both Ju, Judah and Ephraim, and in and in him, and this shows us reconciliation. Through through his seed line and through his uh, through his uh, uh, bloodline or seed line, and through uh, through this inheritance and David, like I mentioned before, became the eternal throne of David, and and there would be no one that would uh, cease from being on his throne because it was transferred into the spirit realm. They you can there we we've been through all these centuries without a king. On David's throne and God said there would always be a seed on David's throne and that because it's not something we can see this is not physical this is spiritual his seed and Yeshua sits on that throne in the heavenly places and this is what and the and, and he sits before God he sits on his right on the father's right hand but it but everything has to be established everything has to come through because he's he's uh, forming up a kingdom a kingdom of priests. And it says, we're grafted among them and when them partakes of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, the oil, the fatness, the, the abundance, the abundance. And it says the riches and that word in uh, Strong's mean wealthy, the abundance. So th because of the, the uh, because Ju the Judah, uh, you know, did not receive their messiah their king then it it opened a door for ephraim and the gentile world to come into the messiah and be reconciled to the house and the kingdom of israel yeshua came preaching the gospel of the kingdom he came to establish his kingdom because before then these were the preparation stages for the kingdom you know, uh, you know, Messiah in Christ, you know, God rested the Messianic age or the Messianic kingdom. God rested in Messiah on the seventh day, it, it, establishing that there's going to be a kingdom. But he had to, he had, but it had to, it had, all had to play out. 
in the physical realm. So, and so when Yeshua came, what did he do? He came preaching the kingdom because the forefathers had already established the the all the all the requirements to to establish a kingdom, a dominion. Does that make sense? A a, a or a priestly order, a, a kingdom order, and a and a domain, a, a place of where they could possess and set up rule. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It started with Abraham. First, what did Abraham get? He got the promises of a land, and then he got the promises of the, of, of bearing a seed that would inherit the land, okay? Right. So this is why uh, he said, come out of your country, and I will give you this land as an inheritance. And so by faith, Abraham left the, uh, the Ur of the Chaldeans, went into Haran, then, uh, and then God told him to uh, travel down to the Egypt because there was a great famine in the land. And he went south. He went to Shechem. And then he went to, to Egypt. And then he came out of Egypt. And then he dwelt in Beersheba and in the Neved Valley. And this is where Abraham, uh, he abode. So he had, to, he had to come out of Babylon. He had to come out of, out of the east, travel west. And then head back towards the east again. And so you also see the children of Israel that went down into Egypt. And they were there for, they, it says 430 years, but there's debate on that. And, and then they went through, through, they went through the uh, Sinai, which they went to the Arabian Peninsula, basically, Arabia Peninsula. They came across through uh, to uh, Beersheba, and they went north. They went north, where you see where they uh, that they circled around the wilderness. They would circle around Sinai. But when they uh, when you see them in numbers, and you see them, they start traveling north, northeast, because they're about ready to conquer the Promised Land. See, they were already in the Promised Land that God had already given to Abraham. And, and there were, uh, you know, there were strongholds within the, in the promised land, but it wasn't until the Jordan crossing, which was on the Eastern part of the Jordan river, where they, where their resistance got stronger. But they all had to, they all had to come through the same pathway. Do you understand? They all have to come through the same path. Just like us, we have to go through the same pathway. We come out of Egypt and then we go into our promised land, but we're not but we have not yet conquered the fatness or the riches that of this inheritance. We've only, we're still abiding in the desert. Because the Arabian Peninsula is all desert land. Uh, the Neved Valley is all desert. You know, where uh, Isaac and Abraham and all them, they, they you know, they dig wells in, you know, because there was water underneath. But, they, but, they, but, they, but the surface was dry and desert and parched land. And, but it's when you get up into Jerusalem up to the northern part of Israel, around Jerusalem, uh, Jericho, uh, and crossing over the Jordan River, where you see an oasis of plush land, where 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 there's there were the fruitfulness of the land, and when you get over to the Jordan, then that's where you see the abundance of the fruitful abundance, where they where they were like uh, they were like grasshoppers in the side of the giants and their and the and the abundance of the fruit and the and that's the 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 land is flowing with milk and honey this this was the fatness the richness of the inheritance but they had to go over the jordan to to the cross of the jordan be able to uh possess that land because that land was fertile land it was abundant land. It was the blessings of God. This was the where the inheritance was. This is where, this is where God had uh, marked them to travel and to succeed. Do you see? Because we're on a journey. We're on a journey. We go through the journey of wilderness of sin, and then we go up into the promised land. 
So anyway, so Abraham kind of stayed in Shechem. He stayed in Hebron, and he stayed down in the southern part of Judea. And, and he and he abided there until we get to the 14th chapter. But anyways, but this fatness. So anyways, we we are wanting we're wanting the richness. We want the benefits. We're not we don't want the complacency of 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 our of our walk with God. We don't want to stay on the base level. We don't want to just get, be mediocrity, have, you know, be settled with mediocrity. We want to inherit the the abundance. We want to we want the fatness. We want the benefits. You know, we need to consider God, the, the benefits that God has given us. You know, it, what's that scripture? Um, uh, I'll look it over. The benefits. It says, bless the Lord daily loaded the benefits, even God our salvation. Bless the Lord over my soul and forget not his benefits. So the, he, there are there is benefits in worshiping God. There's benefits in 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 uh, in, in in serving Him. We don't have to uh, live in this realm of status quo. You know, always striving, always dealing with uh, parched land, always dealing with uh, the you know the crop failure. No, we want to go where we're where we're producing and receiving from God. But you got to get close to God to be able to receive from God. And it says in Genesis, uh, I'm going to start showing in Genesis 13, it says, and starting with the 10th verse, it says, And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plains of Jordan, and it was well watered. Everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden, the garden of the garden of Eden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zorah, the, uh, then Lot choosed him all the plains of the Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated themselves one from another. And Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan. And Lot dwelt in the cities and the plains that pitched his tents towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, after, the, after Lot was separated, that him lifted up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, these will I give it to thy seed forever." This is eternal. So there's there is a there is a uh, there is a shadow uh, there's a shadow city or land that sits above the what what we see here on the earth. So you know because the Bible says as the dust of the earth or as the stars of heaven your your descendants will be. So it it multiplied it here on earth but it also multiplied it in the heavens his abundance was more than just what what he could see with his natural eyes is that you know that's what i'm trying to get we have to look we've got to look spiritually and it says and i will make thy seed as the dust of the earth so if a man can number the dust of the earth then shall thy seed also be numbered and arise walk through the land the length thereof so he walked all the land of it and the breath of it for I will give it to thee. Now was this supernatural or physically? Because his journey only took him southward. But I feel like God took him on a journey spiritually and he walked from the east to the west to the north to the south to the, to to the to not only the physical but a spiritual uh the connection. He had a spiritual vision of of his inheritance because it said for because his his inheritance was eternal and i mentioned this before he was looking for a city and builders who maker was god he wasn't he never he never looked at this because he he saw something more in the spirit realm that was more that was far more reaching than what that was in the carnal and he never lost heart or faith when he did not obtain it in the physical does that make sense? 
And it says, Then Abraham moved his tent and came from and dwelt in the plains of Mabri, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. So he went to Hebron. But in the 14th chapter, it says, And it came to pass in the day of Abra, king of Shinar, so that the kings of the east, Shinar is Babylon, and it says, and, uh, and Adarach, the king of Elziar, and uh, uh, the Shadomir, Shadomir, which is the king of Elam, which is Persia. He is, so these are the kings of the, of the east, which is, and, and built there, and, uh, and it says, uh, and the kings of the nations, that these made war with Bear, king of Sodom, and with uh, Bershi, king of Gomorrah, and Shandah, king of Abaddon, and the Shambir, king of Zebulun, and the king of Bela, which is in Zoar. Zoar is kind of, these are the five cities that were surrounded Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and, and so, and east of that, which would be, would, which would be Persian, and then north of that. So, he went into battle, and he had a war uh, the, with the kings. And I believe these kings are principalities and powers and rulers. They're not your f literal kings, and I'll get into that. But they, they, uh, they, they, they're because they were the, the Nephilim or the giants. Uh, Bashan is Og of Bashan, and, and the Bible says that the the in the north, and I'll get into the the uh, north east were where. The, the giants where the strongholds were. And they and all through that territory, it's called the King's Highway. And uh, I have a picture of that. It is the King's Highway. And before, before uh, Abram, or Abram could uh, receive his inheritance, he had to battle and he had to conquer the kings of the east. And it says in the, and I got a half picture. It says the, the king's, uh, the king's highway. Let's see if it says uh, the king's highway, which is a little bit bigger depiction of it up here. Let's see. It says the king all the way down here. This is where the Dead Sea, this is where Sodom and Gomorrah is. And up here is the king's highway. And all the and all these are the strongholds of of ruling principalities and powers. If you look at it in the small, it takes you right to takes you right to Hebron. Right here is Hebron. Uh, not Hebron. I'm sorry, Mount Hermon. Sorry, Mount Hermon. And these were all the kings, which I believe were the principalities and powers and the uh, strongholds of the giants and nobody you see they when they crossed they came in they came over on this side and they and they traveled upward until they got to like in the middle they dwelt in the land of Canaan until they got into the middle where they had to cross the Jordan to be able to inherit the abundance of the land does that make sense and so they were, um, see, because there, oh, here's Jericho right here. Here's Jericho. Where's Jerusalem and Jericho. And this is where they crossed over. But in numbers, they were trying to pass through. And they got, and they got, uh, they got stopped by the king of Bashem and the Bashan and Silo. And they, and the Amorite king, the, which abided in those areas. And they would not let the children of Israel pass the king's highway. And this is very significant because we travel up. We come out of Egypt. We're coming out of this area right here. And we're traveling northward, northeast. Because there's a, there's a, there's a reason why Satan does not want you traveling that area. He does not want... He doesn't want us going, he doesn't even want us to go across the Jordan. Even though the Philistines were around this area, the Canaanites and stuff, they, they, were, a, they were a race of giants or Rephimines, but they were not like the ones over on this side of Jordan. So we have battles over on this side 
of our, you know, of our uh, promised land inheritance. When we get saved, come out of Egypt, and we're come, we're wandering in, in coming into our promised land, we're having, you know, some attacks. We're having some issues, but it's not like coming over on the eastern side of this. And I, I'm talking metaphorically. You know what I mean? Because just like just like Abraham, it says, it says that he uh, he went to battle with the kings down here near Sodom and Gomorrah, and and he uh, it says and it says and all these were joined together in the valley of Shittim, which is in Salt Sea. Twelve years they served uh, Chedor Ch 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 and which is a Persian king. And in the 13th year, he rebelled. And remember when I told you about the 13th? It could be a unity of love and a bringing a unity and love and bringing in a, a, like Joseph. Remember, he brought, he brought discord in the beginning, but at the end, he brought uh, all of Israel together in the bonds of unity. And, and he elevated, well, also 13 is rebellion. And it's very significant when we see that that the occultists and the people that understand about the 13th tribe and they claim to be the 13th tribe, they understand that 13, it, it has, you know, a negative connotation. You're, you're, you're rebelling against God. Or you're, or you are going to submit to God. Does that make sense? And thirteen uh, is supernatural. It's, I like it. Bring it brings the unity, and it's supernatural. So whoever is on, in that thirteenth realm uh, connects all twelve tribes together in unison. And I showed that last time in my book that it it's the center. Uh, 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 like the Ephraim becoming the firstborn is the 13th tribe. And he is the, he is the connection that, or the bonds of unity that brings all of the house of Israel together under, 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 under one, uh, priestly kingdom. Does that make sense? Which Judah raises, uh, like I said, he's a, the chief ruler and he becomes the king, but he doesn't bring them and he does like he doesn't bring them into the bonds of the unity until like the reason that that is because this is what they're trying to do this is what judah is trying to do judah believes uh that they will bring back the 12 tribes of israel they believe once they establish their homeland and prepare the land they believe that after the uh, Gog and Magog war and all the, and after the third temple is built, that they will restore uh, the 12 tribes of Israel back into the land with one Messiah and one and under, uh, under the Messiah's rule and with one reign. So they, this is, you know, what the Jewish uh, agenda is. But we know that Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, having both the seed line of Ephraim and Judah connection, he, he's already brought them into, uh, he's already brought them in. Does that make sense? Because he's, he, he him representing uh, Naomi's son as, as Ephraim and Boaz as the uh, line of kings is coming down through the line of Perez. That is coming, that uh, bringing them both into one stick. Mm -hmm. One new man, as the Ephesians says, bringing all in one new man. And now everyone's grafted into Yeshua Messiah. All the branches have been broken off, like I said, Yeshua Jesus is that uh, is the vine. We are the branches, and we get grafted into Him, Jew and Gentile, or or Israel or Ephraim alike. So, do you see what I mean? But the establishment of Ephraim is not about a people as much as it is a kingdom and dominion and dominance 
and power and control and being able to uh, go into the fullness of, of, the, of their possession. What God has promised them. It, 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 and understanding that th through Ephraim, because his name means fruitful, that we get to be partakers of, of this through Messiah Yeshua. Does that make sense? Through him, we get to be partakers of the, of the, of the greater promises of the greater inheritance. We don't get to have to stay within the confounds of the southern part of Judah and stay on the Mediterranean Sea. But we can go into where there is where the fatness of the land, where 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 uh, where God abides, and it says that because, and I'm going to get into that because ba this is Bashan, during uh, the King's Highway going up the King's Highway. There, the Bashan is right here, and Bashan uh, shows up in Scripture sixty times. In 53 verses. And Bashan means fertile or smooth land. And the tribe of Ephraim actually possesses that land. It shows right here that the tribe of Manasseh actually possesses that land. And the tribe of Ephraim, it kind of sets right here. But Manasseh has quite a large dominion. And Manasseh and half-tribe of Manasseh possesses that land. And there's a reason why God put them there because it, 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 it really speaks loud to what God is doing. So uh, Bashan means fertile or smooth land. So this is the choice land. This is the pleasant land. This is, but, it, uh, but spiritually or metaphorically, this is, uh, this is where God abides. This is where God dwells in the sides of the north. So this is why Satan, as we get further up that king's highway, Satan, the resistance gets stronger. The Bible says that God dwells in, in great darkness. So we are moving towards uh, the sides of the north to get because what are we we reign with Christ we are we are co-heirs with him he sits on God the father's right hand so as and so he he's already seated up there but we're moving through these uh these oppositions and through these struggles to be able to inherit the goodness of the land to inherit the benefits, the, the promises of God, the richness of our inheritance. And I believe we can have that richness now. But, but I believe the occult world, knowing, knowing that, uh, that this is where Satan, where Satan covets and this is where the, the promises that are, reside and the treasures of heaven are in those places. The, tr we, the Bible says we, uh, we, uh, we obtain the treasures of, of heaven. And, 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 but the treasures, we're, we're down south somewhere, but the treasures that we want to obtain are, are northeast of us. And, and I think a lot of people are just settling because we, we don't understand the treasures that God has for us. We don't understand uh, it says, for the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. And we are, uh, we get the treasures. Uh, let me go see. It says, thou shalt have treasures in heaven. It says, Jesus said unto them, if thou be perfect, go sell thou hast and give thy poor and thou shalt have treasures in heaven and come and follow me. And, God, and so Yeshua speaks uh, of of treasures in heaven. It says, "It says though he be, he be fruitful, Hosea thirteen fifteen. It says though he be fruitful among brethren, talking about Ephraim, an east wind shall come, and a wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness, and his springs shall become dry." 
and his fountain shall be dried up. He shall spoil the treasures of all the pleasant vessels. Um, this is talk about, let's see, it says, according, it says, O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me it is thine help. I will be thy king. Where is any of other that may be saved thee in thy city and thy judges of whom thou sayest, give me a king and princess? And I give thee a king in my anger and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is abound up. His sin is hid. The sorrows of a trefailing woman shall come up upon him. And he is an unwise son. For he should not stay along in the places of the breaking forth of children. Breaking forth. And this is what the Perez breaking forth. And I will ransom them from the powers of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O oh, death, I will be thy plague. O oh, grave, I will be thy destructions. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Though he be a fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come. Talking about those principalities and powers. Uh, the Lord shall come up from the wilderness and his spring shall become dry. And his fountain shall be dried up. But, but he shall spoil the treasures. But see, there's a promise that he will spoil the treasures of the pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate, for she has rebelled against God, and they shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women which all. So this is, you know, talking about them, but uh, them coming under destruction when uh, Syria comes and and takes them into capture. But they are, they will be the ones that will, um, or they will have the promises of the treasures of heaven. Let's see. Let me look that up. It says their land also is full of silver and gold. Let me look up here. O Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, thy house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, the east wind, and are soothators like the Philistines, and they please themselves in, in the children of strangers. And the land also is full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of their treasures. They, their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. Their lands also is full of idols, and they worship the works of their own hands, that which they own fingers that have made. And men may bow down, and the great man humbleth himself before them, uh, given to them. Enter into the rock, and hide thee in the dust, and fear the Lord, and the glory of his majesty. The uh, lofty looks of man shall be humble, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon all them that lift up and shall be brought low. And upon the cedars of Lebanon, we're talking about that area, that are, are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, see that pleasant land, mm -hmm. and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, upon every fence wall, and upon all ships of Tarsus, and upon all the pleasant pictures, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, and the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rock, and into the caves of the earth, for the fear of the Lord, and the glory of his majesty, when he arises to shake uh, terrible the earth and in that day men shall cast the idols of silver and idols of gold and they made uh, each one for himself to worship uh, to the moles and to the bats to go to, into the clefts of the rock and into the top rags of the uh, rags of the rocks for fear of the lord and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake terrible the earth see she for man whose uh, breath is in his nostril and wherein he is to be accounted of. So he always talking about these uh, principalities, powers, Bashan, the East. The East has overtaken them, took their spoils. And 
but but those treasures that are in the land that are found within this spectrum or this realm belong to the uh, to to Ephraim and Judah. They belong to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And this is why the, the we they have this resistance that is coming from the east because they do not want us to receive the, the promises, the treasures, the treasures that are found in those heavenly places. Uh, I, oh, here, here it is. This is the one I was looking for. It says, and, uh, uh, I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of the secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, and the God of Israel, for Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel my elect, I have even called thee by thy name, and I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. And I am the Lord, and there is no else. There is no God besides me. I gird thee, thou hast not known me. So he will give us the treasures of darkness. And this is, this is where they reside. Because if you go into a, a, a Masonic temple, and you and you go and there's an altar there, and w within that altar there's a Bible there and there's a Quran there and there's different and they have lit up corners, saying this is the four corners of the earth, but the north corner is dark because this is where God resides. This is where the Father's throne is, and this is where Satan covets he covets that area and they know that that is that realm they is is has been darkened no light to shine upon it because this is the where this is where they have gathered in this in the high places of god in the heavenly realm does that make sense that's why the bible says that god uh dwells in this darkness because they have surrounded his throne. They have surrounded those areas that we will not receive the tr hidden treasures, the treasures of heaven, because it, it because we have to cross the Jordan River. And I'm going to get it because Jordan means descender. You must come down first. You must decrease. And, and Christ must be magnified and increased before you can able to conquer. You can't conquer on your own. And I'm going to get into that because this, this, is, this is about decreasing. It's about coming low. And, 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 and because these, these principalities, these powers, these forces of the east, north of the north, uh, we we cannot penetrate it takes god to penetrate it takes the the it takes the uh, uh it takes messiah it takes yeshua and this is why i'm gonna finish the so limit i don't want to get ahead of myself but this is why uh we we see god starting with abraham but before it says says and all the uh, we'll go back to genesis 14 so they had this war amongst the kings and it says that uh, they went into rebellion. These kings went into rebellion and they went after the election of God. And, but, uh, and which is Abraham and his company of men. And, and, and Abraham was able to defeat them. And uh, there were quite a, quite a number of them, if you read uh, chapter 14. And, and it says, uh, and it says, and the, in the 10th verse, and the veil of Shittim was full of this uh, slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gorath fled and fell there, and they that remained fed to the mountains, and they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their vestals, and went their way, and they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his good, and departed, and there came one that had escaped, and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plains of Mebron and Amorites, brother Eschol and brother of Anar, and these were <coughs> confederates with Abraham. So actually, they they uh, kidnapped Lot. So they provoked Abram <coughs> into war by kidnapping 
lot. And it says, and they took him captive. And uh, so it says, and, uh, and when Abram heard that he, his brother was taken captive, he armed his nephew, trained servants born in his own house, 318, and pursued them from Dan. And he decided, uh, divided himself against them and his servants that by night and smote them and pursued them. <laughs> Uh, and they and so they brought back all the goods, all the spoils, and also brought again his uh, his nephew Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. And the king of Sodom went unto meet him after he returned from the slaughters of Shadalamir and of the kings and were with him in the valley of Shevev, which is the king's dell. And the Melchizedek king of Salem brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High. See, this is where uh, Abram became the successor of the Melchizedek order. He became, uh, he was the rod, I believe, and I get into this book, where the rod was passed to him. And I believe that Melchizedek was Shem. And because he had the, it was passed to him by Noah. And, and so, and this, Shem was now going to pass it to uh, Abram, and Abram became king. He rose above his enemies mm -hmm. because the Most High, he, he represented the Most High, Melchizedek, which is an eternal uh, priestly order, the kingdom of heaven. It's a heavenly order of Melchizedek, means king of righteousness, Zedek, priest of righteousness. And so, and because he defeated these the the these these strongholds these forces of the east god elevated him into the status of king he became king he became the representative of the melchizedek order and he held the rod which was passed to isaac which was passed to jacob and isaac means uh, uh it's itzok which means he laughed and when we go through the story of Abraham, it, we see in the Abraham uh, in the next chapters, uh, God was making a uh, because now him being king, the representative of 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 the, of the heavens and the earth, he held the rod. He he rode in, rose in preeminence. Now God was able to make a covenant with him for his seed because his seed would be the ruling. Uh, seed over all of the kings, the kings and priests and principalities and powers that are, uh, that are in the uh, in the unseen realm, that are in the uh, in the, in the realm of uh, of the spirit realm, because he was, you know, Yeshua Jesus raised into preeminence. Now he is the priest out, out of the order of Melchizedek, and he rules all of God's inheritance. So he has been set above all principalities and powers and all rule because of this data. But he made a, a, a covenant with Abraham after he had already received a status of being king in the, and a God's representative in the earth. Mm -hmm. And he held that title deed of the abundant inheritance. Does that make sense? That because he fought against those resistors that was preventing and he prevailed with god's help he was not afraid he didn't set back he took what rightly belonged to him is that right it says and so he uh and he and said and so he was the priest of the most high god and he was blessed him and said blessed be abram of the most high god possessor of heaven and earth and he blessed be the most high god which had delivered thine enemies into the hands and gave him tr uh, uh, Ties of all, and the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me thy persons. He wants the souls of men, and take the goods thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine eye hands unto the Lord, the most high God, and the possessor of heaven and earth, and that I will not take even a, a, a thread, even a shoe, lay a uh, lace, that I will not take anything from you other than those that, and he would not give him the, the souls of men. So 
we see how Satan is wanting the souls of men. He wants to dominate men. He wants to keep them in captive. He wants to enslave them. He wants to keep them from their their proper place in God. They, God has made them sons. He made them inheritors. He's got He's got them a place of, of where there's hidden treasures. There's hidden hidden things. There's blessings. He get, He says, "I give you all spiritual blessings in heavenly places." But we've got to tap into them and we've got to go through to possess them. We, we got to move in rank. We don't become kings and, and uh, elevated in this, uh, in this uh, uh, co-heirs with Christ until we pass through. We've got to pass through. We got to descend in Jordan and start allowing him to increase so we can move in God. And this is why it says in uh, Ephesians 4, uh, 6 and 12 and 14 that, uh, uh, that our weapons are, are, what is it, you know, put on the whole armor of God because we fight against principalities and powers and rulers and high places. And we are to cover ourselves with the armor of God. And it says in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 that our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God and pulling all, down all strongholds. What are these for? What 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 are we what are we battling for? What are we trying to obtain? What what is it that God is telling us to equip ourselves because he wants to he wants to bring us up higher in the high places. But and so and Satan is our resistor and his king the kingdom of darkness will resist us because he does not want us to fully obtain what God has plan, plans for us in this life and the life to come. And it says in uh, Genesis 49, 20, and the blessings of thy father has prevailed. And now we're going to talk about, uh, uh, let's go to Isaiah first. So we're, so we're talking about Genesis 48, 5, 20, and the blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. This is talking about Joseph unto the utmost bounds of the everlasting heels and they shall be the heads of Joseph. The heels should be the heads of Joseph and the crowns of this head, the crowns of his head of him that was separated from his brothers. So the, the, uh, the kingdom of heaven, the the heads, the rulers of God's inheritance that rules over these powers and principalities and all the realm of darkness sits in in it sits upon Ephraim. It sits upon the heads of Joseph, and we are been crowned as as an authoritative figure in the house of Joseph. Does that make sense? Because we are joint heirs with Christ. Uh, it's, and I just, in Isaiah 14, it says, uh, it says that Satan, in Isaiah 14, 12 and 16, he says, these uh, that these uh, this is where he abide. He wants to abide. He does not want Joseph's inheritors. He does not want Joseph to ex uh, you know extend above him. He doesn't want uh, the 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 promises of Joseph, the everlasting hills, the heights, the high places, the mountain where where God abides. And I'm going to get into. It. He doesn't want. The uh, he does not want us to take our place mm -hmm. above him, and he sure doesn't want Messiah, even Yeshua. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father, he he is still going to resist this kingdom, and his warfare is not wi with the inhabitants of the earth as much as it is with Messiah Yeshua and his remnant. His the remnant of his seed, the one that is uh, that uh, has made him king over their lives, he 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 because he knows those who have made him king, we we have a position of, of above him. So those these are the ones that he he resists. This is the one he's he fights against. This is the ones 
that uh, he, uh, he tries to uh, deceive. He tries to bring uh, calamity in their life. He tries to bring discouragement and hopelessness. And he, and he tries to get them off course because we have to rise up by faith. This is, we obtain these things by our faith, our, because this is spiritual. We transcend time by what we believe. We obtain through, through what we believe. We can have what we believe, but we've got to believe it. We, those who believe in their hearts, mm -hmm. and we, we have to believe. Our whole being's got to have this, this uh, assurance of, of, of belief that God is going to prevail and God is going to, to, uh, uh, to conquer those that try to conquer us and that his ways are better and his ways are more, uh, are, are much more, uh, beneficial mm -hmm. than what, what we can, uh, than what we have here on earth. And we've got, we've got to keep focused on his benefits, on his, his rewards, on his, on his promises. We've got to, we've got to endure mm -hmm. to, to make it. Cause what, once we cross over that Jordan, once we start going up the King's highway, once we start traveling up where you, you there's no turning back. There's no turning back. Mm -mm. You've got to pursue to obtain, or you're going to be, defe you're going to be defeated along the way and you will, you'll come short of what God has planned for you and what, and, and to inherit the treasures or the richness of his, of his abundant, uh, his abundance of wealth and acceptance. And we, I guess what we can, we can't, we think of wealth as the wealth down here. We think of the money. We think of possessions. We think of, of, uh, maybe a, a place or, or a position, but, this abundance is 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 power, power, control, authority. Uh, uh, it it is a uh, it's the abundance of his riches, the abundance of his. Uh, it's it, it's it's beyond material. It's a it's a you know we we uh, we only deal with the realm of de uh, death and decay. Do you see things, you know, things, they perish. They, they, the things get old, they wax old and they perish and they decay. And, and then you cast them off, right? But this, these things are eternal. They're forever. They're everlasting. There is no end. They're, they, 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 they don't, they, they're without cease. Once you're, once you're, you'll forever be with the Lord. Once you have to cross over this, this body, this mind, this, this new nature, this new life, this, this inheritance of, of life is, is more exuberant and more fulfilling and more pleasing than, than what we can, what we're so used to down here on this earth. Does that make sense? This is why the, God can't even put it in words or can describe or, or there's nothing in this earth that can compare to the richness of this inheritance. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because we, we only know loss. We only know decay. We only know death. We only know darkness. Even in its, even in the most, uh, beautiful prestige, uh, elements of things. And when, you know, when we see things of grandeur and beauty and elegance, it, it, it all rust and you know, it all just gets all rust and moss get in and think and, and, uh, you know, it all starts to break down. Do you see what I mean? And even when we see the earth, the earth even erodes, do you see? And it decays and it, and it falls apart and it cracks. And even though it has some beauty to it, it, it is not in its perfect uh, you know, perfect state. Does that make sense from the beginning? We can't even imagine what, what being in, in, uh, the perfect state of God, our bodies, our minds, and our, and our world to be in a perfect state. And this is, this is what Yeshua came to do. He came to, uh, to 
reset us and get us in through this process of, of, of bringing us into a perfect state. If he starts with the inner man and he's bringing us into perfection, but this, this body is going to wax old and die. But when all things are been restored, the, the, this is the promises of his, of his, uh, uh, say, you know, second coming or he promises of the word of God that when all things have been restored back to the original, back into his perfect state, we, we can't even fathom that. We can't even imagine what that is because we have not yet experienced it. So, but we can't even imagine what heaven's like. We can't imagine what that position that Satan covets so much. And he said, and he covets this place because it, he knows it is a, is a place of power. It's a place of, of recognition. It's a place of great wealth. He, if, he, if he didn't know it was a place of great power and wealth and, and awe, then he wouldn't uh, be so adamant to, re, to, uh, to, to obtain it. He wouldn't covet it so much. And it says in Isaiah 14, 12, it says, uh, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? This position uh, that I spoke on last time, uh, the star, the morning star, or, the, you know, the Bible said, let the, uh, st the day dawn or the day star rise in your heart. Because it's a messianic place. It's a, it's a rising of this a position of preeminence which Satan or Lucifer uh, once held in the in the realm of the kingdom of God, and the and and he usurped this uh, worship for himself. He wanted this position. He want the instead of bringing worship unto uh, the God the Father and and making him the center of the worship, he wanted to usurp that for himself. And within that, he iniquity was found in him. It got perverted because he became self-aware. And it says, How art thou cut down to the ground, which thou weakens the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. But yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, It is this, the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of the prisoner. All the kings of the nations... Even all them lie in glory, even one in his own house. But thou art cast out of the grave like an abominable branch, which is they. It, he's imitating the uh, the the branch or the rod that was passed to the patriarchs that represented this Melchizedek position, the possessor of heaven and earth. And as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through which I saw that cast cast down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden down underfoot. So they're going to, uh, you know, they, they are trying to move into this place. He said, uh, I will sit upon the mount, the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. So there's a mountain of God that sits up in the sides of the north. And this is where, and it sits in the, in it sits up here, you know, this is, a, you know, a, like if you had an aerial view of heaven, but this, but up in the heaven, in this unseen realm, there is a mount of God. There's a place of exaltation in the spirit realm. And we see that in uh, Mount Hermon, which is the, where, the, where we see that the fallen angels or the, came and mate with the daughters of men, they came on Mount Hermon, and this is where all the rebellion started. And God, uh, and I believe that Satan had promised them dominion, had promised them, uh, you know, some kind of 
uh, leadership, rule, power, and, and position. And so now these kings have become the kings or the principalities and powers that rule over mankind. And now they rule over mankind in the seen realm. And this is why there are strongholds and they want to possess these everlasting heels that were given to the head of Joseph, which has been given to Ephraim. And because uh, Ephraim is the crown, is the crown of his glory. Because this is where the grafting in process comes in. This is where the abundance comes from. The crown of Ephraim. It says, it says, Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkard of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty faded like a flower, which on the heads of the fat valley of, of them that are overcovered by wine. So uh, saying that Ephraim became proud and became drunk with idols, with the fornication, but they were, they were of a glorious beauty. Do you, that you know God had lifted them up, but they were but Satan had taken uh, Ephraim, you know, into captivity, and has uh, and this is separate uh, Ephraim and uh, separate him because he has been given over to idols. But now of the restoration of Messiah Yeshua is coming. He restored Ephraim back and put the crown back on his head, but. He was lifted up because uh, Ephraim became the firstborn. And we're going to see this here in a minute. Uh, and it says, and so, so Joshua, in Joshua 15 and 8, the borders went up to the valley of the sons of Hinnom and unto the south sides of the judges' sides. And the same in Jerusalem. And the borders went up to the tops of the mountains that lieth before the valley of Hinnom westward, which is at the end of the valley of the giants northward. So the giants were north. So they crossed over the Jordan River. And now they are in the territory. And they are now up against the, 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 the giants in the land. And it says um, in uh, Joshua 18... Uh, so uh, the east, uh, they stretch out. So Bashan, like I said, Bashan became the place where uh, Manasseh was given over. And and this is where, the, right, it sits right beneath. Uh, Bashan uh, sits right beneath uh, Mount Hermon. And, and because this is where this is where it becomes really uh, the pleasant land. This is because you're you're getting as you get closer to uh, the the amount of the congregations of the sides of the north, you are going to just start experience more fruitfulness in your life, more abundance. And so, but within that abundance, you're going to get resistance. Satan wants to make the throne, uh, make his throne on the sides of the north. Jerusalem is above the Jerusalem or the promised land of above mirrors the promised land below. The heavenly promised land of the unseen mirrors the biblical promised land. The strongholds in the uh, biblical promised lands in the earth are the same in the, uh, in the spiritual promised land. Full of principalities and powers and authorities that, uh, that make roadblocks. For uh, for the people of God, uh, Satan attempts to move upward to uh, to the forbidden areas of heaven, the heavenly realm, where Yah sits and Yeshua sits at His right hand. In Psalms forty eight, it says, "Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of holiness, beauty for the situation, the joy of the whole earth, Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great King." God is known in uh, known in her, his palace for a refuge for lo as the kings were assembled and they passed together. So he he sits in uh, he sits in the mountains of holiness on Mount Zion mm -hmm. where the great king is and in his palace. And and you know when you looked at the temple 
during the time of uh, David and Solomon, if you look, go look at picture, they, uh, they kind of, their castle or their home uh, kind of was set right on above, set a little bit elevated above the temple. And I, you know, when I look at this, you know, we look at the temple, but as God's house, but we see that he sits above his temple. He's, he's somewhere in the, in the uh in the in the distance he's not limited only to the the temple area does that make sense uh he, this is where we we come about we come inside those into the temple of god and we worship him but he he he's he you can't put him in a box you, you know you can't put him he, and it says in uh, psalm 68 which i believe is very significant because Psalm 68 tells us where God abides. He abides and this is where uh, where the promises of Ephraim and the promises of Manasseh. Manasseh is also spiritual because he uh, because Leah and Rachel Leah was the natural house of uh, Israel was the natural kingdom of Israel but Rachel represents the spiritual kingdom of Israel and Manasseh being uh, part of Joseph the uh, firstborn of, of Joseph he he acquired a huge inheritance from God and he is part of this spiritual inheritance also. It's just, even though uh, Ephraim raised into preeminence as a firstborn status uh, over all of, all of Israel, Manasseh follows in line with, uh, with the spiritual house of Israel because of Rachel. And there is a blessing within that because he got to inherit the the pleasant land he got to inherit the the richness of this land he got a position just beneath the the mount uh, the mountains of the lord mm -hmm. the heights of the hills he you know half tribe of, of, of manasseh got he got close mm -hmm. if you look at it in a in a spiritual way he got he at when you look at the tribes he was the closest to God, the closest because he sits on the sides of the north. And and if you look at where Bashan, it being the pleasant <laughs> land, and and I'll read this in a minute, that he got next to God mm -hmm. as one of the most one of the most elite tribes. And and I, and I thought that was pretty interesting because he got so much of the inheritance and he got closer to, you know, parallel in the spirit realm to where God resides, the father resides. And it says, it says, I'm going to skip around. It says in Psalm 68, it says, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let him also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away as wax melt before the fire. So let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them be rejoiced before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rides upon the heavens by his name, Yah, and rejoices before him. A father of the fatherless, a judge of the widow, is God in his holy habitation. <laughs> this is where God dwells in the sides of the north, in the city of the great king, in, in the Mount Zion, in the, in the mount of the congregation. And above, above Jerusalem, Jerusalem is down here still. Mm -hmm. But he says way above Jerusalem. And it says, the earth shook and the heavens also drooped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Thou, O God, didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thy inheritance when it was weary. Thy congregation hath dwelt therein, for thou, O God, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. The Lord gave the word, great was the company of those that published thee. Kings of armies, this army of kings that I've mentioned on kings of the king's highway, these line of kings, which I believe, you know, is a was a Nephilim race. 
So that became principalities and powers. Uh, it says, Terry, uh, flee a, a space, and she that tarries at home divideth the spoil. Though ye have leaned among the pots, yet shall ye be as wings of a dove covered with silver and her, uh, silver and her feathers with yellow gold. When the Almighty scatters kings in it, it, will, it was the white as snow in Salem, Salem uh, Solomon. The hill of God is as the hill of Bashan. Mm -hmm. And the high hill as the hill of Bashan. This is the congregation of the north. Uh, why leap ye, ye high hills? This is, where does the, Joseph, Joseph says the everlasting hills. That this is where the inheritance of Ephraim would, would abide with Manasseh and with those that were grafted into the Messiah would abide in the everlasting hills where God, the Father, it says the hills of God is the hills of Bashan and the high hills of the hills of Bashan. Why leap ye, ye high hills? And this is the hills which God desires to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. This is the place where Satan covets. He covets that, that northern part of the heavens. That most highest place, the most uh, abundant. Who can, who can measure it? But this is where God abides. This is where the Father resides. And, so, and the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai, in the holy place. That thou ascend on high, thou hast led captive, captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. And what did, who's, who, who, that was in the New Testament. Yeshua would come and, may, uh, and release the captive, made captive, and give gifts to men. Mm-hmm. Through Messiah, we obtain this high place. He sets us free from the captivity of Satan and gives us the gifts, the treasures of heaven mm -hmm. and gives us a place with him in the heavens. Uh, gives, Yea, for the rebellious also that the Lord God might dwell among them. That he brings us into the place of the realm of the Father. He, he is the king of, you know, he's king of kings, Lord, Lord. He sits on his right hand, but he is, he is king over Jerusalem, over Israel. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. he, he, he sits in between us and God. Right. He is our mediator between God and man. And this is why we, he brings us into the place of God. No one can get to the Father but by him. And when we, when we challenge ourselves to go through the king's highway, then we are going to experience the, the realm of God's realm, God's domain, his place in the heavenlies. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Where he resides, his, his dwelling place. It says, it says uh, for the rebellion also that the Lord God might dwell among them. So say, for the rebellious also that that Lord God might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord. So we were the rebellious, but who covers us? Yeshua. He recovers our rebellious nature so that we be like his nature. So we can come into the dwelling place among a holy God. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Lord who daily loves us with benefits. Even the God of our salvation, Selah. He that is our God is the God of salvation and the God of the Lord belongs to issues. He, it belongs the issues from death. He brings us from death and God, the surroundings of death. This whole place is decay and death and darkness. And he lifts us up out of this place into his place. And the Lord said, I will bring again from Bashan the higher elevations we we move up into the higher elevations of Bashan where where the fatness where the fruitful because Bashan means fruitful mm -hmm. Bashan means fruitful and I will bring my people again from the depths of the sea that my foot may be dipped in the blood of thine enemies and thy tongue of the dogs in the same 
And I have seen thy going, O God, even the goings of my God, my king in the sanctuary. The singers went before and players of instruments, uh, among where the damsels play and timbrel. Blessed be God in the congregations, even the Lord from the fountains of Israel. And it goes down, there is little Benjamin with their rulers, the princes of Judah and their councils, princes of Zebulon and the princes of Naphtali. The God has commanded thy strength, O strength and O God, that the which thou hast wrought in us because of the temple of Jerusalem shall a king, because of the temple of Jerusalem shall a king bring present unto these, unto thee. And this is why I say uh, with, and I'm going to get it because this is why when we see that uh, Abraham he met with the king of Melchizedek and he became, you know, he was elevated in, in, in his stature with God. He's no longer a slave or a servant. Now he's, now he's been a, a been faithful obedience to God. He's, he went the, he went in the way that God has told him to go. Mm -hmm. He come out of Babylon. And now he, now he's fought God's enemies, and now he's going to be elevated in in this status of of being a king. And now he gets to be the covenant of 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 uh, of the seed is now going to be the eternal seed is going to God was going he's going to walk through the pieces and he's going to make a covenant with Abraham and with his seed that his seed would be the seed that would bring in this everlasting covenant and bring the, the the people into this place in this dwelling place and it says that in when i meant to say in itzhak it means he laughed it means he laughed and even though abraham and uh, sarah did laugh you know questioning god that in our old age or we're going to have a son god said that surely that you're going to have a son and he's weird, but God, this means that God laughed. God laughed at those who have, have surrounded his throne. Those who have tried to cause rebellion and insurrection against his throne. Those who have war with God. Those who have war with, you know, the Bible says that the lamb was slain at the foundation of the earth. And those who have tried to make war with the lamb of God, those who have been trying to make war with God, the Bible says they, he sits in the, in the heavens and laughs. Doesn't he not? God laughs at those because he knows through that seed line coming through Judah is going to be the one that will eradicate those powers and principalities and authority they one day they will be just like manasseh forgotten manasseh means forgotten make me forget they will be forgotten and it's going to take this humble servant this obedient humble servant that raised in preeminence because the bible says that he was a root that grew out of a dry place out of the desert, he came out of Egypt into the de desert, and now he, through uh, through him is going to be the way of salvation into the realm of God. And every tribe, every tribe that we see right here, Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, this means behold a son. This means a troop or attack, and this means forgotten. That means the Son of God will cause a troop of attackers, people that will form up an army of God, and that will crush and defeat and wipe out the inhabitants of Bashan. The inhabitants, those who surround themselves around the mountain and the congregation of the Lord, those who have, in, have squatted in the in the in God's dwelling place on the high hills on the everlasting hills that were promised to Ephraim and Manasseh and the whole congregation and the whole house of Israel through Joseph's headship and it's going to be through a baby that was born in Judea 
raised up. And this is why God laughed because it was through Isaac, the seed of promise that would come forth their destruction. And God sits and laughs at them knowing that it, it that it, it doesn't take an army. It doesn't take force. It just, it, it could, because the rules and the law, the laws of God are, they are, they are, he does, they're, they're without, um, without this, this mighty power. Do you see what I mean? To, you know, you know, it is a humble servant. The one that was willing to, the obedient, faithful son that was willing to lay his life down. It took him decreasing to raise in preeminence into the heavens and take full dominion where, uh, where Adam left off. It was through the, this, this covenant he made with Abraham, the faithfulness of Abraham, that was going to what eradicate the powers of darkness. Do you see? This is why God laughs at those who try to make war with him because he's going to outsmart you. He's going to always outdo you. You cannot get the best of God. You're not going to get the best. He sits and laughs at you. And this is why when uh, Isaac's name, he laughed, means God laughs at you. Those who think that they're going to be able to defeat God in this end day, they think they're going to make war with the lamb. They think that they're going to have any kind of inroads to, to God's place and position and come into his house and come into his domain without God uh, destroying you. The Bible says that even the heavens and the earth will shake and he will destroy both heaven and earth. They, they, they have these attempts. They want to come into that place. That This is the desire of Satan to, uh, to uh, make his way into that congregation. Make his way into that place. And that's why it says... Uh, in uh, in Ezekiel eight, that the the image of the north, they do the image is uh, is uh, and I wrote it in this book, and uh, which I believe that uh, that image that Ezekiel saw is the Anamasiah, and he does they do make their way into the congregation and to where God resides, and God retreats for a season. But they will not have the last laugh. They will not. God, God sits and he laughs at their, at their attempts to try to dethrone him and his son. And they will not, they will not succeed. And this is why it took faithful obedience of Abraham. It took uh, him being, uh, being a servant of God and him being a uh, Willing to uh, go against God's enemies, be able to believe God in faithfulness that He was going to eradicate those kings of the east, bring Him up into a place of position with God, give Him a right hand authority in, uh, to to His seed that was going to destroy. The Bible says if the if the prince of this world knew that Jesus was going to die, he would have never, never crucified the Lord of Glory. If he knew what it was going to what what it was going to entail, and this is why uh, this is why uh, uh, this is why it's so significant that we understand that uh, that God is going to He is going to bring us up. He's going to raise us up. He is going to. We're going to have to fight. In these last days, we're going to, to to thwart deception, to thwart the powers of darkness. We're going to have to get a mind of war of warfare, a mind to to combat these principalities and powers world because they're coming down. They are splitting the the veil. They are they are going to they're going to make this an interdimensional warfare. We are going, they're going to, oh, they're going to, uh, to, uh, pretty much, they're going to uh, tear that, that, that veil that sit, that, that, of uh, the spirit realm and the physical, and they're going to cross over into our realm and, it, and vice versa. And he's, they're going to try to connect heaven and earth together. And when heaven and earth is together, we, 
we're, we're whatever comes over that divide we you know we're going to have to face the bible says that hearts men's will fail them for what comes upon the earth and it says why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers takes counsel together against the lord against the all the anointed saying, let us break their bands of center and cast away their cords from us. So they're trying to, uh, trying to uh, sever our connection with God. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh and the Lord shall of heaven uh, have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in the wrath and vex them in the sore displeasure. Yet I have set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. In the sides of the north, in the congregation, the Mount Zion, the sides of the north. I will declare the decrees the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathens, or the nations, for thy inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them with a piece of potter vessel. Be wise now, therefore, or ye kings, the kings, kings' highways. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and he perish from the way. With his wrath he's kindled but a little. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. So he laughs at there. And he knows that these kings are set up on, on uh, against those who are trying to obtain their inheritance. And he and these kings are going to be set up in warfare against us. And those principalities and powers are going to be the ones that are going to cross over. Mm -hmm. They're going to cross over, and we're going to be uh, we're we're going to, and they're going to be part of this antichrist system. This whole this is this is all not uh, just natural this is not just carnal this is spiritual and the spirit and the physical are fixing to collide come together because this is not what they want they don't want the earth they don't want to sit in jerusalem what does it matter if they sit in jerusalem it does not matter a bit that temple is it has no relevance mm -hmm. the third temple has no relevance it has no significance to it, it is not holy can't it can't be holy it will never be holy it's never going to have the presence of god fall upon it it, it will never be desecrated because it, it because god has rejected that that place god has rejected those things. he he has moved up to a higher a higher uh you know there's a higher uh yeah but uh, what i'm trying to say is the a higher playing field this is a higher place. This is not about earth anymore. This is not about man. Even though they, they uh, there's the, the elites and those are uh, are working with Satan to break uh, to breach the the uh, uh, the heavens and to and to uh, break those dimensional portals and to come into those places where they can uh, enslave man, but they want to open it up. They want to open it up so that you will see that nothing is uh, is covered anymore. Nothing is hidden. The the spirit realm and the physical are are are, are going to be uh, be open up for everyone's view. Does that make sense? And they're going and we're going to see things firsthand, and we're going to see this war in the heavenlies firsthand. It's no more carnal. This is why he tries to keep us on a carnal plane. He never wants us to go and get the weapons of our warfare. He doesn't want us to put the armor of God on. He doesn't want us to take on the principalities and powers of the air. He never wants us to rise above them because we never can get the treasures of heaven. We'll never be endowed with the powers of God. We'll never have the anointing the fatness of the land until we go up. And if we don't go up, then we'll never defeat the enemies that are set before us. Yes. And they will control us and they will enslave us and they will destroy us if we do not rise up in power and authority and take our dominion over Jordan. Mm -hmm. See, also that also says we decrease. See, Manasseh means forget. We forget our formal life. 
It's too full. No one will God by Yeshua and his army will defeat and eradicate the armies of Satan and, uh, and darkness. But we, as we travel up the king's highway, we must decrease. We must be forget our formal life. We, we, we no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. We do no longer have power within ourselves to take on the strongholds, to take on the weapons. Uh, 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 and, and be able to fight against these 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 Nephilim, these these strong forces without Yeshua being on the forefront of our being. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're never going. It takes His power, it takes His authority, it takes His rule, and He endows us, and He must raise up in preeminence in us, and we must decrease. We must be forgotten. We must forget the formal ways. We must forget the ways of this life. We must forget our, our life down here. Because we are moving up to higher ground. We are trying to possess the, the everlasting hills that were given to Ephraim and, to, and those who want to follow after the eternal kingdom. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm hmm where Satan and all his Nephilim and all the people, the fallen angels, they have they have guarded them and they have shielded. They, that, that, uh, let me go down. That word, because each of these kings' names and, and their place of rule and dominion, they, they all have meaning to what they, what they uh, actually uh, stand in resistance to the children of God. Uh, and what they are actually doing. It says, I'm going to just kind of go through this right quick. Uh, so Ephraim, as the firstborn inheritor, he promised land. He, he gets the promised land, all of what God has promised. Uh, Abraham, that Abraham's blessing fell on Ephraim. Which was from the uh, from the was it the Nile or Euphrates rivers? Was it from the Nile, Nile to the Euphrates all the way down to the Tigris River? From all of the rivers that, that it had the land had expanded. So, anyways, it says uh, from it says uh, who smote. Uh, so, anyways, it says the Ephraim as the firstborn inherited, he inherited, uh, he inherited all of the promised land of Abraham. Yeshua will destroy the principalities of the powers to conquer Bashan, the fruitful land, in the heights of the northern east side of the Jordan, which was given to Manasseh. And what you can say in Joshua 18, it was given over to Manasseh. And it says, who smote great nations and slew mighty kings, Psalms 135, Silo, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of the Canaan, and gave their lands for an inheritance, an inheritance unto Israel his people. Thy name, O Lord, endureth forever, and thy memorial, O Lord, throughout generations. So in Psalms 135, those were those precious land, that fruitful land, that pleasant land was given to Israel. And Silo uh, means rest. Silo, the king of Silo means rest. So what the Bible says, we enter into his rest. It says, Psalms 22, 12, many bulls, wild strength has compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan has beset me around. So they stand, the bulls means wild strength. There's a, there's a supernatural strength, a wild strength. That in, has encompassed me, a strong bull of Bashan has beset me around me. So they prevent us from, from going up to the higher places of God. Joshua 17, 5. And there fell ten portions of Manasseh beside the land of Gilead, which is the rocky regions. Uh, it, it also means the witness of the heap. And Bashan means fruitful, which were on the other side of the east of Jordan. Joshua 17, it says, ye the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of the city, but the Canaanites would dwell in the land. Yet it came to pass when the children of Israel were waxing <laughs> strong that they put the Canaanites to the tribute 
but did not utterly drive them out? And the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua, saying, Why hast thou given me but a one lot and one portion to inherit? See, I am a great people for so much as the Lord has blessed me therefore, hitherto. And Joshua answered them, If thou be a great people, then get thee up to the wood country and cut down for thyself there a land of the Pesacites and of the giants that were there in the lands of the giant. It Mount Ephraim be to a narrow, uh, Ephraim to be too narrow for thee. And the children of Joseph said, The hills is not enough for us, and the Canaanites that dwell in the land of the valleys have chariots of iron, both they who are of Bashid and of her towns, and they who are of the valley of Jezreel. And Joseph spake unto the house of Joseph, even Ephraim and Manasseh, saying, Thou art a great people and has great power. Thou shalt not have one lot only, but the mountains shall be thine. The mountains shall be thine. For it is a wood, and thou shalt cut it down, and the outgoings of it shall be thine, and thou shalt drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots. This is, we're talking about, uh, you know, supernatural strength and, uh, and uh, equipment and an arsenal to fight against the, the feeble people of Israel. We're feeble people, and though they be strong. Joshua 18, and they that shall draw, uh, divide it in seven parts, Judah shall abide in the coast of the south, and the house of Joseph shall abide in the coast of the north, with the northern lands where God abides. Ye shall therefore describe the land into seven parts, and bring in the description hither to me, that I may cast for you before the Lord thy God. But the Levites have no part among you, for the priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance. And Gad and Reuben and half tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance beyond the Jordan on the east, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave them. And all men arose and went away. And Joshua charged them that went to describe the land, saying, Go and walk through the land and to describe it, and come again to me, and here, and I may cast lots for you before the Lord in Shiloh. Shiloh. And the men were uh, passed through the land and described it by cities into seven parts in a book and came again to Joshua to the host of Shiloh and Joshua cast lots for them, which is the place of rest. And before the Lord in Shiloh and there Joshua divided the land unto the children of Israel according to the division. And in Hebrews 4, 11, it says, let us labor, therefore, to enter, let us labor or strive, the scriptures say, to enter into his rest, lest any man falls after the same example of unbelief. It takes faith. It takes supernatural faith and strength to be able to pursue. Uh, because, you know, the promised land has to do with our physical body. You know, we got the spirit, soul, and body. We've got we see that the outer, you know, Egypt is the outer, you know, outer uh, body. But we also see the, or the world. And we see our soul as the wilderness coming into the promised land. But the spirit is, and the spirit of the mind is where we are trying to conquer the devil. This is where we're conquering these forces because they are trying to suppress us. They're trying to oppress and depress and suppress and try to weigh us down. But when we get to a place of where our spirit of our mind is being renewed and we are becoming a, a new creatures in Christ, we, we our, our temple, our, the, uh, Jerusalem sits in our hearts. You know, we've got the Ark or the Ark of the Covenant or the temple uh, Ju uh, Jerusalem inside of us, but as we expand in our in the realm of the spirit, we're expanding in the spirit of our mind, and this is where we're getting inputs from God, and we're getting inputs also from the kingdom of darkness, and this, and so we're constantly at this warfare because of, because the enemy is coming at us. Because he it wants because if we just believe, if we just have faith, if we just put our faith into action, it, nothing is impossible for those who believe. 
and we conquer inner space and we conquer this realm of the spiritual through what we believe and well and and how and and, and we can make those things our reality does that make sense and so we enter his rest so it's it's not only on a uh, exterior or external uh, warfare, but it's also an, an internal warfare. Does that make sense? Because we are connected with the spirit realm, with the spirit of our mind. And the Adam and Eve's uh, spirit of the mind became darkened. But Yeshua opens the way for us to come into that where we we receive him and he and he uh, is uh He's uh, maturing us to be able to receive from him. And the light of, of all of, of the revelation of scripture, the revelation of who he is, the re revelation of his promises. These are the, the what he, uh, he enlightens us so that we can believe and move past. So we can, we can experience the supernatural. We can experience the things of God. We can, we can move up even before we even get to our, the realm of heaven after we die. Does that make sense? We can obtain, uh, we can obtain the promises of God now for every believer that is working in the realm of the supernatural. That's working in in uh, co uh, with a uh, with uh, with a uh, with co heirs or co uh, some you know working together or simultaneously uh, or yielding to the Spirit of God. Those who are led of God, those who are become sons of God. So we are we are becoming, as we decrease, we are allowing the Holy Spirit to increase, and we are we are being partnered with Him to be able to uh, succeed and move about in this life to 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 uh, to obtain uh, uh, you know to obtain our inheritance. To you know, we also get protection. We also get revelation. We also get uh, we get this uh, the gift of faith. We get that we get endowed with the power on high. There's a lot of things that we can receive. He gives gifts to men, you know the the gifts of the spirit. So there's a lot of things that are in operation once we have enlarged our borders in the spirit man to receive, and where our minds are connected with the mind of Messiah, where we can receive of Him. So this is why uh, we are moving up in the spirit of our mind, not not through meditation, not through New Eastern practices, but through our inner man. The uh, Yeshua will 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 start to uh, give us understanding, start giving us wisdom, start giving us knowledge to these things, so that we will be aware mm -hmm. of the spiritual battles. We'll be aware of what's going on. Yep. And we become enlightened to these things. And so it says, For the Lord has chosen Jacob of unto himself and Israel as a peculiar treasure. I just read that. For I know that the Lord is great and that the Lord is above all gods. Whatsoever the Lord pleases, that he that did he in heaven and in the earth and the sea and did uh, at all deep places. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightning from the rain. He bringeth the wind out of the tre uh, treasuries. Who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both of the beasts, who sent tokens and wonders into the midst of the O Egypt upon Pharaoh, upon his servants, who smote great nations and slew mighty kings, uh, Shiloh, Shiloh, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land for an inheritance, an inheritance unto Israel, his people. The name, O Lord, endureth forever, and thy memorial, O Lord, throughout thy generation. The king of Og, he's, it means long neck, from the word realm, or like a hearth, or a fire. So the, uh, he, he, he is like a fire, a hearth, that stands uh you know, as a, as a fire or a, not like a consuming fire, but as a prevention, you get close to that, you'll get burned. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, and it means long necks, means chain. So he, he, uh, he's a very, uh, powerful, uh, King, King Og. And we see him in uh, Deuteronomy or Deuteronomy, I believe. 
where they, uh, where they, uh, where the children of Israel were trying to pass through the land, and they were trying in numbers, I believe, and they prevented them to come through the king's highway. Deuteronomy three thirteen, and in numbers, and uh, it says, uh, and they would not let them pass. So Abraham came out of Babylon through the promised land into Egypt, then sojourned back into the promised land at Kadesh Barnea, which means holy. So he, after he left Egypt, he, you know, he went into the town called Holy. He was sanctified. And in Genesis 14, he went to the wars with the, with the kings and he rose in preeminence as king himself. And Isaac was born with Abraham, sojourned in the south, southern parts of Beersheba, of the Negev Desert, east of Egypt. And, and Isaac means he laughed. And Psalms 37 and 2 means that God laughs at those who try to war against him. As we move northeast of Jordan, stronger resistance, the forces towards, towards Mount Hermon get more... Uh, more relevant and they get more uh, difficult to pass through the promised land surrounded by the jordan river was an oasis in a desert place but the northeast mountain regions are rocky as israel conquer the higher places or the higher hills of the hill country in nehemiah 22 moreover they gave us the kingdoms and the nations and did us divided them into uh, corners so they possessed the land of Silo, the king of the Amorites, and the land of the king of the Heshbons, and the land of all uh, king of Bashan. Their children also multiplied thou and the stars of heaven, and broughtest them into the land uh, concerning which thou hast promised to their fathers that they should go and possess it. So the children went and possessed the land, and they subdued. Before them, the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, and gave us them and their hands and their kings and the people of their land, and they might do with them as they would. As they took the strong cities and the and a fat land, a possessed the houses full of goods, well digged, vineyards, olive yards, and fruit trees in the abundance, so did they eat and filled and became fat and delighted themselves in their great goodness. This is what the Lamb provides, abundance. Children of Israel travel to conquer the strongholds surrounding the king's highway. Numbers 21, which belongs to Ephraim as firstborn. Manasseh possessed most of the northeast, Bashan of the uh, east of the Jordan River. Manasseh means to forget. So we, uh, so this is why we, they are to be, those things are to be forgotten. One day God will destroy them and they will all be forgotten. But we also decrease as we, as we go up that mountain and let, and let Messiah increase in us because he is the reconciler to the heavenly father. Yes. And we only get it through him. So he's got to bring us from the South where the promised seed was originated in the southern part of the Neved Valley down in down in Bethlehem. He was in Bethlehem. He was born there, but he went into Egypt and came up. He also had the same route and came up. And he is the one that will be the one that will deliver us and bring us into our promised land as king, priest, warrior. Mm -hmm. and, so, and we get to inhabit the fullness of the land. Numbers 21, it says, uh, And the Lord hearkened unto the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called that name the place of Hermon. And the journey from Mount Hor, by the way of the Red Sea, and to compass the land of Edom. And the souls of the people were much discouraged because of the way. And they went down. Let me go down furthermore. And oh, we gotta go down and say, so, and they dwelt in the lands of the uh, um, Amorites. And Moses said, A spy at Jezreel, and they took the villages thereof and drove out the Amorites that were there. And they turned and went up by the way of Bashan, Og, at the king of Bashan, 
went out against them, he and all his people, to the battle of Iran. And the Lord said unto Moses, Fear him not, for I have delivered him into thy hand, and all the people in his land. And thou shalt do to him, and thou didst unto Saho the king of the Amorites, which I dealt in Heshbon. So they smote him and his sons and all the people until there was none left alive, and they possessed the land. So, and that, like I said before, that word uh, for that king of the Amorites, means warrior, means warrior. And, and they, and so he was a strong resistor. Uh, that they went against, but Shiloh, they went toward Shiloh, which means rest. So anyways, uh, so the, in Bashan, they turned and went up, by the way, Bashan, the king of Og, and Bashan went out against them and his people to battle. Bashan is a biblical place east of the Jordan River, mentioned by name 60 times in scripture, fertile land, which uh, which uh, had the confederates of the Rephaim mm -hmm. and the giants at Israel's entrance of the promised land, all came against them, but other but other rooted, the other rooted, and the country extended from Gilead in the south of Hermon, in the north south of Her Mount Hermon in the north, and from Jordan on the west. Salak on the east also was half of Gilead was given to the half tribe of Manasseh. So, so as we get closer to our promised land and here's before we can get into that richness of his grace, the richness of what he has promised us. We have to go through these uh, controversial uh, powers that are not going to want us to be a part of that of that place. Mount Hermon, according to the Book of Enoch, 200 fallen angels, watchers descended from the heavenly realm to the top of Mount Hermon. They be, then began to nefariously active with uh, human women, resulting in the offspring of giants, often referred to as the Nephilim, meaning fallen ones. So, uh, which I, I do agree that th these things did happen because I think everything that is in Scripture really deals with that realm more than it does in the physical realm, and and I believe that they did. Uh, fight those resistors, the fallen angels, the, the giants, the offspring that was mentioned in Genesis 6. And and this is why now these, these things, uh, we still to this day are dealing with these things. and But we're not dealing with them in, in the sense of physical, uh, carnal, we're not over there, but we are, but th those who are, you know, God knows who, 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 he, who belongs to him. And, and Satan does too. So the, and so those same principalities, those same powers are, 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 you know, they're restricting us to move up in our position in Christ. And that's what this is about Basham, where that, where the, where the, where, where the rest of God, where the, the fatness, where the, the promises, the treasures, the things that uh, we have, uh, we kind of forget about and we settle for the earthly treasures than heavenly treasures. That's true. We're not, we, we're, we, we rather gain uh, wealth here instead of have gaining wealth there. And that's what, you know, and we, and we don't really think about how deplete we are in our, um, in the in our power and the authority because you like i've mentioned before you only get gain power you only gain authority over those principalities and powers as you overcome them you have to overcome them first before you gain power and before i before i leave i'm going to read a little bit because i wrote about it a little bit on the the king of bashan yeah. and it says 
A scripture is admonished us to look at Abraham and Sarah and amplify their faith. Exemplify, I'm sorry, their faith. Abraham received the spiritual inheritance, the eternal promised land, by his faithful obedience. He and Sarah but, uh, put their faith in the promised seed, Yeshua, who would come and restore them to the father, Abraham. Looked for a city that had foundations and whose builders were... Uh, and maker was Jehovah. Hebrews 11, 8, and 13. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned, sojourned in a land of promise as a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, <laughs> the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude. And as the sands which is by the seashore, innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but had seen them afar off, seen them with their spiritual eyes, and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Genesis 15, 5, and, and he brought forth, uh, uh, and he brought him forth abroad and said look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto them so shall thy seed be abraham believed yovah's word and looked intently beyond the heavens to his seed the offspring that would be heirs to the promised land the uh, his nephew Lot, however, looked in the natural towards the plains of Jordan on the east of the promised land. Sodom and the surrounding cities were vibrant and much welled water. The water was underneath the coming up to make the promised land fertile. The plains of Jordan were an oasis in the middle of a desert. Uh, in Genesis 18, 1, 3, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains, oaks of Mambri, bitterness or rebellion, and set in the, because in the middle of, of the promised land were strongholds of rebellious fallen angels. And so there was, it made the, uh, the land dry and barren and unfruitful and, uh, and because of the bitterness of the rebellion uh, inhabitation. And he sat in the tents in the heats of the day and lifted up, lift up Nassau, his eyes, and looked, and lo, three uh, revelation of men stood by him and when he saw him he ran to meet them from the tents or ol door and bowed himself towards the ground and said my lord if now if i have found favor in thy sight pass not away i pray thee from thy servant in the strong accordance mamre means strength or fatness in the hebrew letter the mem, uh, the memresh the root word for mamre is mar which means bitterness the promised land was rich, so Mambre with a it, it could it means strength or the fatness, the fatness or and also it can mean uh, Mambre or Mem or the Mem and the Resh uh, is uh, in the letters in the Mem and Resh means that in Mambre, but the Mambre means bitterness. The promised land was rich and fertile, but had strongholds of rebellious fallen angels. Within its border, bitter waters uh, dominated the environment because of the uh, because the Garden of Eden was in a state of impurity, Nadab impurity. Although the giants in the land made it seem hopeless, Abraham's faith looked beyond the natural to believe Yovah's promise. The oak groves of Mamre are the, in Hebron. In antiquity, the Amorite tribes were called Mamre. Abraham dwelt in the plain oaks groves of the Amorites who lived in the rural areas as tent dwellers. And they say the Amorite tribes came from, from Lot's daughters, the Moab, the Moabites and the Amorites came from, or Ammon came from the, the ancestral relationships. But this tribe of people have been around from before Abraham. 
So they cannot be descendants from from incestual wow. relations of Wad. So anyways, so they've been around since the Philistines. They've always been around. They were they're a tribe that it's don't that that has been with Israel throughout those whole all those generations, all through the uh, you know uh, all the way through Torah, they and all through even through the Psalms, all these kings and all these uh, tribes are still in effect. So they're supernatural. They're not, you know, they 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 don't die out. They're always they're always around us. Do you see what I mean? So they can't be humans. Does that make sense? Or they, you know, they can't just be a, a someone that was born naturally. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or they live, their longevity outweighs their, a human's life. I don't know. You know what I mean? But anyways, but they've been around before Lot's incestual relationship. So they were, so anyways, they just were under a different name. Abraham dwelt in the plains of groves of the Amorites who lived in the rural areas of tent dwellers. Abraham was also a tent dweller and made an alliance with the sons of Heth in Hebron. Abram brought Sarah, uh, Sarah's burial plot from the Hittite sons of Heth, who lived nearby. According to uh, Jim Steinhardt, the root Hebrew letter of the Amorite are M R Y, Mem, Resh, and Yod. The letter out the Alpha was added in the Sumerian text, and the word for Amorites was M A R. And T-U means land. The Amorites dominated two-thirds of the northern can uh, Canaan. Amru, Amru, or Martu, were gods of the Amorites. The Oaks of Monre belonged to the Amorites located in a rural area outside of Shechem. Not in Shechem itself, the townspeople of Shechem were Amorite Hittites who defiles Jacob's daughters. Jacob prophetically spoke that Joseph would get the portion of his spoil and he took from the Amorite's hand by the sword. Mount Moriah was dominated by the Amorites and called the Amorites mountains during the Bronze Age. So they migrated, they were down in the desert, but they had migrated up into the northern and they had changed names mm -hmm. through, through the centuries. Ezekiel 16 and 1, 3. Again, the word of the Lord came unto the, me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, and say, Thus says the Lord unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is the land of Canaan, and thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother a Hittite. Yovah uh, Yehovah says to Jerusalem, Thy birth or thy nativity were where you were born is of the land of Canaan and your mother was a Hittite because Dina became a Hittite because of Shechem defiled her and he was the son of Heth. Her sexual relation was Shechem and the father was an Amorite who worshiped the pantheons of false deities. Dina was to be the next generation to build up the house of worship, Jerusalem. And I get into that in more detail in this book about how Dina became part of the daughters of the land and how she falls into a type and shadow of apostate Israel, uh, Jerusalem and how they and how Satan has infiltrated that through her because she is the female of Jacob she's Jacob's daughter and Jerusalem is uh is is worship and it's it's been said that uh because of Levite and Simeon went and killed Shechem, and and that and the tribe and the, the that the, and the tribe that defiled uh, Dina, uh, that she went into the house of Levi, and Levi be, uh, became because she had no husband because they killed him, and now uh, Levi had to take responsibility for her. And it that doesn't say that she bore any seed or anything, but. She probably got, got remarried, and that first child would have been Shechem's child. It would have been a Hittite child. This is why you, your father was an Amorite, and thy mother was a Hittite. The Hittite, she was a Hittite bride.
that made her, uh, she was the, she was the daughter of Jacob, but, but she was, she had a relationship, sexual relationship with a Hittite and may, and that, uh, involvement made her the wife of the Hittites. Do you see? Yeah, that should show you when you have, when you have, yeah, uh, you have sexual things, right? Um, well, anyways, she was, she, a part of that person. yeah, well, in there, you know, that's how they, you know, they consummated their marriage, you know, even though they didn't have a legal ceremony that the consummation of that marriage made them a, a, a married couple. He, I mean, she became Shechem's house. She became Shechem's bride through consummation mm -hmm. of, you know, of, of their sexual union. And so anyways, and I get into that in that, in that book about, and that's how, it, how, you know, in the spiritual realm, how Jerusalem became defiled because she went into, uh, into the priestly uh, lineage through Levite and Levite was over the sanctuary and, and a minister over the tabernacle and and it, it show, it's just showing pictures and shadow pictures of it all, you know. And that's why when we look at these prophecies and we don't understand them, how did how did that happen? How how did all, well is because you have to you read between the lines. You got to see things a little bit past the what what you see, you know. Because Dina, Dina, uh, there is a significant role that she plays. And she and she falls in the line of the daughters of the land, and her being <coughs> part of Jacob makes her part of the house of Israel, makes her part of the sanctuary, makes her part of Jerusalem. That and it makes her part of the defiled apostate, whorish Jerusalem. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so, anyways. For the sons of Jacob, but was instead joined to the false gods of the land. De uh, Deuteronomy 3, 2, and 13. In Strong's Concordance, nativity <coughs> means lineage, native, country, offspring, family, begotten, or born, birth parents. <coughs> According to ancient history of uh, Encyclopedia, the Amorites were a nomad <coughs> whose chief god was Emru, lord of the mountains. See how Satan wants to be the god of the mountains? He wants to set his himself on the congregation, the mount, mountains of the congregation of the Lord, and his wife, the desert, <coughs> Belet Shereh, Lady of the Desert. They may have uh, or originated in the areas of Syria around Mount Hermon. The Amorites settled in Babylon and were best known as the Kingdom of Babylon under the Amorite king. Hamruba, uh, known as the Amor in the Amorite period. The Amorites were a nomadic people through the history that had a fierce ruling ch uh, ch uh, chief who forced themselves like brute beasts into the land without consideration of their tribe people. The Neo-Sumerian viewed the their way of life as disgusting and contemptible. contemptible. They ate raw meat, had no house, land, or town to live in, nor did they plow the land for grain, but instead made truffles. They did not bury the dead. They worshiped a pantheon of gods, but the moon god Sin and Amru were their main deities. Uh, Amru is something described as a shepherd and the son of the Mesopotamian sky god, Anu, who is called the Lord of the Mountains because he dwelled in a pure mountain, some scholars, historians, confuse the god of Amru with El Shaddai, the mountain deity of Abraham. Later in history, the Amorite main deity was uh, Molech, or Marduk, or Molech. The Amorites took on mythical proportions and were powerful people of great stature, like the heights of, of the cedar, who occupied the land both east and west of Jordan. Stretching from the highest west of the Dead Sea to Hebron, embracing Gilead and Bashan. 
and Deuteronomy 3, 8, 3, and we took at that time out of the hands of the two kings of the Amorites, two kings of the Amorites, the land that was on the side of Jordan from the river of Enron unto Mount Hermon, which Her Hermon of the Sidonians of Siron and the Amorites called in Shinar, all the cities of the plain and the Gilead and all of Bashan and Shechem and Edra, cities of the kingdom. Some of these were the places, the uh, same kings that Abraham was in warfare with. City of the king of uh, kingdom of Og in Bashan, for only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. So he was the king of the, he, the remnants of the giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. It is not of Rabbath of the children of Ammon. Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits beneath of it, after the cubits of men. And the land which we possessed at that time from Aror, which is by the river of Anar, Arnon, had half Mount Gilead and the cities thereof. And Gilead is uh, more east of where Manasseh, it goes a little bit more east, like Gilead, Ramal, Gilead, uh, the high, it says the heightened places or the mountain areas. This is where a lot of you see David and Saul, you know, there's the strongholds were there and they were always in battle in Gilead and, and Ramal, Gilead. This is the territories that David and Saul would uh, go and conquer. Uh, and it says, uh, and nine cubits was the length thereof in there. And so it says, which is by the river and, and half Mount Gilead and the cities thereof gave unto Reubenites and the Gadites. Remember I told you the Reuben were below the Ammon and the Gadites were above, means troops or attack. And the rest of Gilead and all of Bashan began, be, being the kingdom of Og, Gave I unto the half tribe of Manasseh and all the regions of Gabal, with all of Bashan, which was called the lands of the giants. All that were the lands of the giants. Webster Dictionary of is ancient giant, says to have flourished in Canaan and its vicinity prior to the Hebrews. The promised land was full of the Nephilim before the flood and the Rephamine strongholds after the flood. The other side, genetically modified hybrids drove humanity into worshiping the fallen ones. That progressively led to humanity into depravities, debaucheries, and lifestyles as sexual deviance, which scripture calls abominable behaviors. And this is why uh, we've got, uh, when, you know, the, uh, what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah and God had to destroy it because of their behaviors. And so, anyways, we see that uh, in Genesis 13, but Sodom and Gomorrah was the past tense and future tense is to compare these cities to the destruction of the Garden of Eden. So the Garden of Eden, I believe, was within those, I believe it was the whole promised land. And I believe that the, the, in the midst of the Garden were Jerusalem, Jericho and in that plains of Jordan is where is where the plush land was that's where the garden this is where the, the garden was the enclosure and where Adam and Eve and I think they went outside the garden and they went east of the garden to Babylon and they ate of the forbidden ate of the forbidden fruit the you know, of the knowledge the tree of knowledge of good and evil outside of the enclosure of the garden as long as they stayed in the enclosures this is why abraham's promised land the dimensions is from all the way from egypt to most of uh, what is known today as iraq all the way down to the persian gulf all the way of the uh, arabian peninsula whatever uh, yeah the arabian Valencia or whatever, uh, <laughs> I guess, and it's it's pretty it's pretty scope it's pretty good wide scope, but it's that and up into the mountains of Lebanon and Syria, so it's pretty pretty vast, you know.
place. I should have wrote it down more and be more clear. But anyways, it, it it's pretty vast. It, it shows a little bit of it right here, but it goes further north, but it goes further, further east of it. So anyways, this is what, what uh, I believe Ephraim and the 13th tribe is very significant because the, the cultists believe that they should inherit that, the abundance of the land. They believe that they should inherit that portion of the spirit realm, that enlightenment. They should, they should get the treasures of heaven. They should obtain the promises that Christ Yeshua has provided for us. And they want to, they want to squat on those things that have been given to the people that have given their lives unto the messianic, uh, the messianic kingdom mm -hmm. that it rules and reigns with Christ Jesus that he has provided that has come into him. And these, uh, like the Rothschilds and all them, they believe that they are of that bloodline. They believe that they are of the 13th tribe. And they and Satan has elevated them into a place, they uh, into uh, into the belief that they are Jews. They are Jews who who call them Jews, but are not, and that they should be the ones that should uh, possess all of the God's inheritance. This is why the whole the it says. Uh, that he bought, you know, the Rothschilds uh, bought the land of Israel. And it says, let's see. Uh, According to eyewitnesses who were prominently enough to visit one of the British Rothschilds home, the Rothschilds worship yet another God to Satan. They set a palace for himself at their table. The Rothschilds have been satanic for many generations. The Rothschilds are the important part of the history of the Seal of Solomon, or known as the Hexagram, the Mega uh, Davis six-pointed star, <coughs> or the Star of David. The Seal of Solomon, the Hexagram, was not considered a Jewish symbol before the Rothschilds began using it. Throughout the Middle Ages, the Seal of Solomon had been used by the Arabians or the Kabbalists, magicians, or the Druid uh, witches and satanic, the satanic. One of the few ancient uses of the symbol was the floor of 12,000 years of the uh, Muslims found in Tel Aviv. The 12th century, the uh, Ashkenazi Jews, uh, Man ben, ben Deju, who thought he would be, was the Messiah, used the magic symbol because the Rothschilds were satanic and they adopted the power of magic symbols in 1822 for their coat of arms. The name of the adoptive of their family actually comes from the fact that the 17th century Myers buyers began hanging out a red hexagon in front of their house to identify it. Uh, let's see. Uh, our, our Michelle and decide that that take the name the Red Shield Rothschild in Germany after the Red Seal of Solomon they use. Alice Bailey in a treatise on the white magic claimed that the hierarchy has been specially grouped for which she called the financial group controlling all that can be converted into energy and constituting a dictatorship over the modes of inter intercourse and commerce and exchange. According to the Luciferians, Alice Bailey and the uh, financial groups is the latest groups uh, 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 directed by the hierarchies. In 1836, Zen Heretz Kilsher approached Rothschilds as a proposed Rothschild to buy all of Heretz Israel. It took many years for the Rothschilds to finally create Israel. The Rothschilds have been primarily forced behind the creation of Israel 
And so it is appropriate that the nation carried their magical seal of Solomon as a state logo. The ultra Orthodox Jews in Israel will not serve in the Israel army because they know that the Almighty God was not behind the creation of modern Israel, but rather the rich, ungodly, apostate Jews. They refuse to serve the ungodly and the more wiser they, than men like, like, uh, you know, the, the Nar. <laughs> or the, you know, the evangel evangelicals of the Americans, they are hook, line, and sinker to believing that these things are uh, legit. To twist scripture about God seeding the rule and then to apply them to the blessed, one satanic, secular, communist nation and not another inconsistent and not correctly using the word of truth. Some people object that the conspiracy, conspiracy of power is labeled Jewish rather than satanic, but certain uh, concerned citizens, the objection is valid. However, will these objectors, objectors when take the obvious next step and admit the nation of Israel, which is the Rothschilds created in satanic, is not Jewish, but another, uh, but them who... Uh, but then who knows precisely what, why people do what they do. Uh, so anyways, this is by, I think his name. I'm going to go down. It says, so it's, you know, the powers that be that are controlling all these things. They are setting these things in motion to deceive. And they know what, what all of this entails. And there, and this is this is all a game. It's, you know, it's a war game and it's war strategies. And Satan has to use the children of disobedience to get his job done here on the earth. And we fall prey to it, uh, you know, unfortunately. So it's all, all of it's Gnostic, it's, it's Gnostic religion. Most Jewish people do not concern themselves with learning the, uh, the occult significance to their star of David. So, and it says they worship, Solomon did worship the Asherah, known as, as and all these, uh, which was end up being the god of S Saturn. And with that cube, this is why you see the cube. And this is why uh, I read in my book, uh, in this one about the 13th tribe and about the cube and how that how they want that they want that possession they want to control the eternal realm and the eternal parts of us and they know that the 13th tribe will brings in that connection so they have to uh, put in their work to bring forth their end time scenario so that Israel is brought into this preeminence over the world. And they believe, like I said before, they will bring in the lost tribes of Israel and they will, uh, and they will have their, their king that will rule. But they're not, that king is not going to rule just on the earth. Because he, he, the Bible says in, uh, and I'm going to end on this, in Daniel... that it, it's the king of the of the north comes into the pleasant land well it's the pleasant land is not literal he comes to the he he breaches the heavens he breaches the the that 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 realm of the of the bashan of the heavens just like i read in psalm 68 where god dwells in the heights of the hills in the supernatural and, and in Ezekiel 8, uh, 8, it says that the image of jealousy sits at the gate of the north. Let me read these things right fast and, and then we'll, we'll close. So, I mean, because this is, this is not about a man. I put, they put all these uh, men out there, you know, these figures out there to you know to kind of keep us on a trail we're always on a rabbit trail trying to find out who the animacy is 
and uh, and so we're always you know we're always having this speculation of who you know who it will be and we're always thinking it's this person we think it's that person and this is this is interdimensional this is this 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 uh, he's a god man he this is not i mean this is not physical uh, prominently a physical person do you see what i mean Yeah, see, it says, and, and I was, when we talk about the king of the north and the king of the south, it says, but out of the branch of her root shall one stand up in his estate, which shall come with an army and shall enter into the fortress of the kings of the north. Am I not talking about the kings of the north? This principality, these powers that stand, that guard in the north sides of the north and shall deal against the, them and shall prevail and shall also carry captive into captivity their gods with their princesses and with their precious vessels of silver and gold so there's spoils in that land you know mm -hmm. treasures and he shall continue more years than the kings of the north so the king of the south shall come into the, his kingdom and shall return into his own land. But the sons shall be stirred up and shall assemble a multitude of great forces. And one shall certainly come and overflow and pass through. And then shall he return and be stirred up even in his fortress. And the king of the south shall be moved with chlora and shall come forth and fight with him. And even with the king of the north and he shall set forth a great multitude but the multitude shall be given into his hand. And when he has taken away the multitude, his heart shall be lifted up and he sh shall cast down many tens of thousands, but he shall not be strengthened by it. it for the kings of the north, <laughs> king of the north. I mean, these, God is, he doesn't take us too far, you know, off scope. I mean, this, even though if they play out in the physical, it first starts in the spiritual. And then it plays out in the spirit and then physical. And it says, For the king that shall return and shall set forth a multitude greater than he, the former, and shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and much riches. And those times there shall be many stand up against the king of the south. Again, the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves and to establish the vision, but they shall fall. So the king of the north shall come and cast up a mount, cast up on a mount, the Mount Zion, mount of the congregation, and take most fence city and the arms of the south shall not withstand neither the chosen people neither shall there be any strength to withstand but he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will and none shall stand before him and he shall stand in the glorious land the pleasant land the fertile land the abundant land the where all the treasures of heaven where all our our possessions are our spiritual possessions which by the hand shall be consumed and he shall also set up face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him thus shall he do and he shall give him the daughters of women corrupting her but she shall not stand on his side neither be for him and after this shall he turn his face unto the isles and shall take many but a prince for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease without his own reproach he shall cause it to turn upon him then he shall turn his face towards the fort of his own land but he shall stumble and fall and not be found then shall stand up his estate a riser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom the riches of his glory the glory this is but with a few he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. And in his estate shall he stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give honor of king of the kingdom, but he shall come peaceably and obtain a kingdom by flattery. 
and with the armies of the flesh shall they be overthrow from before him and shall be broken yea also the prince of the covenant and after the league made with him he shall work deceitfully for he shall come up and shall become strong with small people and he shall enter peacefully enter even unto the flat fatness place of the providence the fatness of the land the providence and he shall do that which his fathers have done uh, not done nor his father's father he shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches and yea he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time so this is a spiritual battle from the kings of the north and the, and the highways of the kings like i showed you king's highway the kings of the south and the kings of the north this is the, this is all about this this geographical location of the promised land that is that parallels the spiritual forces that surround it that are in battle do you mm -hmm. see what i mean and the kings of the north is going to conquer and they're going to come and take the spoils of the land which they're going to take the 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 spiritual things that are been offered to the inheritors of the one in, who are in messiah and they're going to take captive those who are, do not comply does that make sense uh-huh and he's going with flattery the, he's going to deceive many the bible says he destroys wonderfully with flattery you know so it's it, it's more than just a, a human army that is taking up arms and fighting against countries uh -huh. this is a spiritual inter interdimensional warfare that we're going to be a you know we're going to be held captive to this is why we've got to get strong in the lord and the power of his might to be able to be shielded in these in these end days mm -hmm. this is why the bible says that the those who know their god will do exploits they will be able to overcome a lot of these things because they are they are we are, we're forecasting this as a spiritual warfare and, and principalities and powers that are 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 odds with each other and we are, and they are going to take over this uh this uh realm of heaven and this is all going to be opened up and the antichrist is going to sit in the second heaven and make himself as god and sitting in the the bible says in the holy place in the in the second heaven and make himself that's the abomination of desolation people and don't, people don't realize that they're going to be seeing a lot of things they've never seen no it's and that's why their hearts are going to fail them mm -hmm. it says uh, the fatness of the province and he shall do that which is the father had, had not done nor his father's father he shall scatter among them the prey and the spoil and the riches and he the riches of our inheritance the spoils we get the spoils of the land those who d defeat the, their enemies get the spoils of the land we if once you conquer you get the spoils not, not your enemies you get the spiritual spoils of the land uh and you shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even that time and he shall stir up his power and his courage against the kings of the south with a great army and the kings of the south shall be stirred up in battle with a very great and mighty army but he shall not stand for they shall forecast devices against him yea they that feed on the portion of his meat shall destroy him and his army shall overflow and many shall fall down and slain and these kings hearts shall be to do mischief and they shall speak lies to one table but shall not prosper for yet the end shall be at the time appointed then shall he return into the land with great riches and the heart shall be against the holy covenant and he shall do exploits and return to his own land and the time appointed he shall return and come towards the south but it shall not be as the former or as the latter for the ships of shittim shall come against him therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant so shall he do 
he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary, the holy place, of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. They sit in the holy place. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flattery, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by the flame and by captivity. This is our destiny, <laughs> but be of good cheer. God, Jesus has overcome the world uh -huh. <laughs> and by spoil many days. And now when they shall fall, they shall be uh, hopping with little heat, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge them and make them white. This is the tribulation. And the time of the end, because it is yet the time appointed. And the king shall do according to his own will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. And shall speak marvelously. So he's coming as he is God, the Messiah, the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. That is going to bring in the outcasts of Israel and is going to reign. And he comes from the sides of the north. This is a, a principality that may enter a human. I don't know. But he, he will act in and he will have the attributes as one of being a God and fierce. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if he, if he sets himself as God and everything that is of God, then he's got to have some of the attributes of God, the actions of God. Yeah. He's got to be sovereign. Yeah. And he's got to be powerful. And he's got to do, uh, he's got to do what God does. And that is to be able to be able to create, be able to convince people he is God. Mm -hmm. Or the Mashiach. That's why they have a lot of people doing these, over in Israel, doing these miracles and stuff. Yeah. They, he, they, he's got to show that he is God. Mm -hmm. And God does miracles. He's all, and magnifies himself above every God and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till the indignation is accomplished for that is determined shall be done. Neither shall be regard of gods of his fathers nor the desires of women nor regard any God for he shall magnify himself above all. This is Satan's dream come true. He wants to extend in the sides of the north and exalt himself and be like the most high. He wants to sit in his shoes position. But his estate shall be honored the gods of forces, which is satanic, the viat and the serpent. And the God whom he fathers knew not shall he honor with gold, silver, and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus the treasures of heaven, the treasures thus and of the earth, and those shall he do in the most strongholds with the strange gods with whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and he shall divide the land for gain. Sounds like possibly Prince Charles. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at the time and the kings of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind. I, I don't think it's physical. Uh, so the king, so the kings of the south will come against him. These are wars. This is interdimensional warfare, and the king in the north comes against him, like a whirlwind with a chariot and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land, the abundant land, the fruitful land, not where the desert is. Where the plush, where the fruits, where God abides, because he can only make that glorious. And many countries shall be overthrown, but there shall escape out of his hand, even Edom, Moab, the chief of the children of Ammon, which is super, all these are supernatural tribes. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the lands of Egypt shall he escape. 
but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt, which the earth or Metzberim, and, uh, and Leviathan and the Ethiopian shall be at his steps by tithing out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many Elderly to make away of many, and he shall plant the tabernacle of his palace between the seas, which is the Euphrates seas, and the Nile. Uh, was it Euphrates? Oh, where, where is it? I wish I had a map. There's the Mediterranean Sea. You got in the Euphrates and the Nile rivers all the way to the Persian Gulf. Mm -hmm. Uh, between the seas in the glorious holy mountains, in the glorious holy mountains where God dwells, yet shall come to an end, and none shall help him. He shall set above in the glorious hills. And in uh, Ezekiel 8, I'll finish off with that. What do you think? Mm -hmm. It says, and I put forth, start with the third verse. It says, and he put forth the form of a hand and took me by the locks of the my he uh, head and the spirit lifted me up between the earth and heaven and brought me in a vision of God to Jerusalem to the door of the inner gate that looketh towards the north. <coughs> Where was the seated of the image of jealousy, which I believe this is the Anna Messiah. He is the image because he's not a man. He's a mongrel or he's a hybrid which uh, provoked to jealousy and behold the glory of God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plains. And thus says unto his son of man, lift up thine eyes now that way towards the north. So I lifted up my eyes the way towards the north and behold northward at the gate of the altar of the image of jealousy in the entry. And he said furthermore unto his son of man, see it thou why thou do even the great abomination that makes desolate. Anything that is unclean, whole, unholy, anything defiled coming in God's presence, God will, he will, he will abandon that area. He will desert. He will, and, and said, because he will destroy everything inside. And there's a time of his wrath. Mm -hmm. And even the great abomination that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far from the, my sanctuary, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. So the, the image is in the north. He, it's coming up, this, this, this uh, power or principality, the, the, the forces of darkness, which has been, been um, uh, joined with humanity in rebellion against God. Is, you know, this is the direction they're headed. They're, this is why they want to be the 13th tribe. This is why they have, uh, they, they have, they know the secrets. They know the laws of the spirit realm. They know what's going to open up those dimensions. They know what it's going to take to break those divides. Mm -hmm. And they know where, where they want to possess. Mm -hmm. And what's been given to Rachel, which is the spiritual house of Israel, Ephraim and Manasseh, is and that, and that open that way for all of Israel and all of the Gentile worlds that come in Messiah. Mm -hmm. That is what they, those are the spoils that they want. They want those spoils. We have not yet tapped into what we have, what God has given to us. We do not know. Like I said before, when I, when I opened up, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, or enter in the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. We can't imagine it, but we will one day imagine it. We'll see it, and we'll behold it in Yeshua's name.
Amen.